get a little work here once I get up here. Since I'm late, I guess we won't bother top hatting today. Sorry about that. You'll forgive me. Dear me, Father, we uh, thank you for this day again. I thank you for these students. Just ask that you just bless this class today. Help us to uh, glorify you what we do and to understand a little bit more about calculus together, Lord. In my prayer, Lord Jesus. Amen. All right, so you asked me 149. Part what? E? Yeah. Let us see. Um, sure, I'll work a similar but different problem. Example one. Suppose we're up against the dreaded 3x plus 17 to the 42nd power times 3 uh, to the to the 8x. How would you differentiate this? Now, you're like, that's not part E. It's similar, but it's just ugly. If you can do this one, you should be able to do 140, the one he asked me about. So first off, what do you guys, what do we got to do? What's the, what's the first order of business there? What, what, this is a product of functions, right? So we need to use the product rule. So that means we've got ddx of 3x plus 17 to the 42nd power times 3 to the 8x plus 3x plus 17 to the 42nd power times ddx of 3 to the 8x. So that's my, my opening move. Right, what's next? How do you take the derivatives of those functions? What, what, do, you, what do you need? I heard a chain rule. I like that. Um, since since we're since we're a little bit stuck on this problem, let's uh, let's give this thing a name. We'll call this guy U, and I'm going to call this guy up here W. So we've got the derivative of U to the 42, which is 42 U to the 41 times du dx. Right, which I'm going to write out. du dx is actually what? d dx of 3x plus 17. Right, and that's all times 3 to the 8x. Then I've got plus this lovely 3x plus 17 to the 42. What's the derivative of 3 to the w? Well, you've got, what's that? Th three? Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. You guys got to learn this. The derivative with respect to x of a to the power x is the natural log of a times a to the x. This is an exponential function. The variable is in the exponent, not the base. The variables in the base, power rule. Variables in the exponent, it's an exponential, so you got to take the exponential rule, which is this. And so I get 3, natural log of 3 rather, times 3 to the w, and then the derivative of w, which is uh, 8x here. And then, uh, let's see here, finishing move, what do we got? I got myself a... Uh, let's see here, 42 times 3x plus 17 to the 41 power. That's just 3 times 3 to the 8x plus 3x plus 17 to the 42 power times the log of 3 times 3 to the 8x times what? 
times 8, right? Uh, let me simplify this one because we could, we could use some experience simplifying. Now, this one is, I'm, I'm going to resist, like, okay, so like, I could technically like pull the 3, I, I could do this, guys. 3 times 3 to the 8x, that's actually equal to, you know, 3 to the 1 times 3 to the 8x. So technically that's 3 to the 1 plus 8x. And, and, and while that, well, that's an interesting tidbit, I, I just don't want to do that for the simplification. I don't think it's the best thing. What's 3 times 42? 126. All right, so we've got, I'm going to pull the 3 to the 8x out front. Um, I'm going to keep my 3x plus 17 to the 41 power. I'm going to factor that out. You just told me 126 is what I've got left here. So that's for the first term. And then for the second term, I've got what? Plus 8 times the natural log of 3, right? What am I left with? So I've, I've factored out 41 powers of this, right? And I factored out the 3 to the 8x. So what I'm left with is a 3x plus 17. And so there you go. That's a, that's a good answer here. And, and, and why I would say that that's a good answer, that's a good simplified answer here. And the reason I'd say that is because, oh, thanks, my, my tennis sheet has returned to me. Um, like a paper yo-yo. Mm. Maybe boomerang. More of a boomerang. Hmm. Okay, so like if we ask the question, where are the horizontal tangents of the function y equals, let's ask this question again, right? Like you got y equals 3x plus 17 to the 42nd power times 3 to the 8x. Remember graphing that in pre-calculus? I hope you don't because if you did, your professor was a monster. Um, where does that thing have a horizontal tangent? What would you need? dy dx equals to zero, right? And see, because we simplified the answer, we can easily answer that question, right? When could this be zero? If, if this is zero, right? So one choice would be you have 3x plus 17 equals to zero is one choice. Or what else? This, <laughs> this mess up here, right? 126 plus 8 log 3 times 3x plus 17 equal to zero. E either one of those things being zero, th that's your only hope, right? Because 3 to the 8x is never zero because exponentials are positive, all right? So like the horizontal tangents would be, if you were looking for them, at like minus 17 over 3, or there's another one at uh, um, minus 126 minus 8 times log 3 times 17, log 3, log 3 times 17, all divided by 8 natural log of 3, times 3, which is 24. So after some algebra, that's what you'd solve for x. These are the two places where you have horizontal tangents. Another thing we haven't done enough of yet is like, what's the equation for the tangent line? What would the equation for the tangent line be? Equation of tangent line to y equals to, let me call this thing f of x because I'm tired of writing it. y equals f of x at, let's say, um, oh fine, 1 comma. <laughs> what happens when you plug 1 into that formula? What's f of 1? Oof. Yeah, don't try to put this in your calculator, I don't think. What's 3 plus, 3 plus 17 is 20. So f of 1 is 20 to the 42 times 3 to the 8th. Oh man, I left my calculator in my 
I don't think I got my calculator. Any of you have your calculator on you? I'm, I'm kind of curious. Is that something you can actually, uh, will it do it? That might be within the realm of the uh, calculator's prowess. I don't know. <coughs> what did you get? So that means times 10 to the 58. Okay. Okay, so yeah, yeah. All right, fine. All right, so anyway, what's the equation for the tangent line? The equation for the tangent line is y equals f of 1 plus f prime of 1 times x minus 1. Now, we were doing this before. We did this before test 1, right? I haven't done it a lot late lately, but remember this is the application, really the central application of the derivative is to find the slope of the tangent line. So we can still do that here. And it would be something ugly, like really ugly. Oh, why have I done this? Anyway, um, 20 to the 42nd power times 3 to the 8th plus uh, 3 to the 8th times 20 to the 41st power um, times big parentheses here, 126 plus 8 times the natural log of 3, I regret this, um, times, times 20. That's your slope, yay, and then times x minus 1. So there you go. Equation of tangent line. It's right there. It ain't pretty, but there it is. Other, so this, anyway, did that, does that make sense to the homework problem, uh, Jordae? So like the, the key is the product rule to start, and then we need to do the chain rule to unravel like the, in that one it's what, x plus 10 to the something or other? Yeah, well, x plus 3 to the 10. So you don't want to actually multiply it out, obviously, right? Like think of it, x plus 3 to the 10th is like the 10th power composed with x plus 3, you know? Other questions? Yeah. 149F. 149F. I can try. Um, so example two. So we're up against ddx of. So this is a fraction, right? And let's see. I'll change it a little bit, but uh, here we've got. I'll change it to cinches. <laughs> All right. So x times the hyperbolic sine of x divided by cosh cubed, let's say, of x squared. And uh, yeah. So the question is, how should we differentiate such a thing? Right? So I would say, you know, first order of business, let's think of it as the quotient rule, right? So we've got the derivative of the top function, which is x inch x, times the bottom function, which is cosine cubed, hyperbolic cosine cubed of x squared, minus the top function, which is x inch x, times the derivative of the, of the, the denominator function, which is cosh cubed of x squared, all divided by hyperbolic cosh cubed of x squared squared. Now, this one, I'm going to propose we do something that we haven't done up to this point because we really haven't had a problem that was sufficiently hideous to warrant this approach. But I think this one is it. Let us divide and conquer, right? Let's, let's study how to do the derivatives of the subparts separately and then put it back together, okay? So, like, I'm going to work out the derivatives that we're working in the quotient rule separately and then we'll put it together for our final answer. And we're not going to simplify this one, right? No, I don't think so. Um, so how about the first one? Derivative of x inch x. That's, that's not too bad, is it? Select the derivative with respect to x of x inch x 
is dx dx times this inch of x plus x times dx dx of cinch x, which is cinch x plus x times hyperbolic cosine of x. So that's how we would differentiate the derivative of the numerator. The derivative of the denominator, see how that goes. So we're taking the derivative with respect to x of hyperbolic cosine cubed of x squared. Now we have to understand what we're dealing with. So what we're really dealing with here is the derivative of hyperbolic cosine of x squared quantity cubed. That's what that notation means, right? That's what this means, okay? So we should think about this being like our, our u. We do chain rule, so we've got chain rule for u cubed. So derivative of u cubed is 3u squared, and then we have ddx of the inside function. The inside function here being cosh of x squared. All right? But it's another chain rule. See, this is a double chain rule problem because now our inside function is not, not x yet, it's x squared, right? So I need to do chain rule again. So I get like 3u squared times the cinch of x squared times ddx of x squared. So I'm doing, I'm doing the chain rule here for the inside function being x squared. Right? And let's put it all together. So putting it all together, we've got um, cinch x plus x cosh x times cosh cubed of x squared minus x cinch x big parentheses, three, um, let's see here, cosh, uh, three cosh squared of x squared times the cinch of x squared, finally times two x. And then all of that, gets divided by cosh to the sixth power of x squared. <coughs> Other questions? Yeah. One forty seven C. You said, let's see here. I say, do not simplify. Assume variables not being differentiated are held constant in the differentiation. So let's see here. Yeah, so. So 147C, um, let's see here, so yeah, I'll just do it because I, if I try to make up something similar, it's just going to, well, let me not just do it. That would, that would be, that would be, un, that would be un, uninteresting. Let's see, so, so let's make it, uh, I don't know, um, 10A squared X squared. <laughs> Minus three divided by a to the fourth um, plus oh sine of x. This is the same kind of thing as that problem, but it's a little bit different. So the key here is we're assuming that the variables not being differentiated are being held constant, right? So for this problem, we're saying that um, you know x is constant in A. So let's see here. So we have the derivative with respect to A of 10A squared X squared minus three times
times the bottom, which is a to the fourth plus the sine of x minus 10a squared x squared minus 3 times the derivative of the, of the bottom function, which is, oh, my bad. I have ddx. What's that? That's nonsense what that is. Here we're taking the derivative with respect to a. So a to the fourth plus sine of x. All right. And then quotient rule, we must divide by the denominator squared. All right, so what's that give us? I don't know. Is it a product of functions of A? That's the question. Is it a product of functions of A? Or is x squared a constant so we can just pull it out of the derivative? Well, no, excuse me. Here, x squared is a constant, so we got what? Oh, so no, there's no product rule here because x squared is just a, a, a constant here, so it just pulls out. So we've got, yeah, so that differentiation just gives me um, 20, 20 a x squared. The derivative of 3 is nothing, so that's just, that's what this is. And then we've got a to the fourth plus the sine of x. Minus, what we got here? 10 a squared x squared minus 3. And over here, derivative with respect to a would give us 4 a cubed. And that's it. Because sine is constant. So the derivative of a constant is just 0. And then the denominator is what it is. So that would be. That would be it. So 147C is th this kind of thing. Like basically, x treats like a constant. And you know, just to give you a, yeah? And you don't need to simplify these questions any further. This is not, not this one. Okay. I mean, I say, I, so, some of them ask for simplification, some of them don't. This one doesn't. This one says, do not simplify. In fact, this one explicitly says, do not simplify. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Um, Another example that I think there's some in your homework, but uh, you guys haven't asked me about yet. Let me give you an example. Let's see here. So, example one, example two, this was example three, example four. There's also ones that are sort of symbolic. Like, suppose f is differentiable everywhere. Find ddx of f of sine of x squared. Things like this. Or find the derivative with respect to x of e to the x times f of the square root of x. How would you do that? So in this kind of problem, f is not given, right? So that means that the answer is going to involve f and its derivatives, possibly. So you just have to work symbolically. And so the chain rule says, well, this is f prime of sine of x squared times the derivative with respect to x of the sine of x squared, which is f prime of the sine of x squared times the cosine of x squared times 2x. And so that would be the answer in this kind of situation. This marker's dead. All right, so we're going to... Whoa. I coached like 10 year old basketball once and like at the start of the season I sunk this like deep three pointer 
when I was practicing with the kids and they were like, whoa. And then I never hit anything else, but it gave them a false moment of confidence. And then they, of course, lost every game in that season because I'm, I do not know the basketball. I, you know, it, to me, it just seems like a lot of push, pushing and shoving and like trying to cheat around the refs, but whatever. Um, I guess the same could be said about like soccer. Um, ba -doo -doo -doo. Okay, so the second one, we've got a product of functions. So on the one hand, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So we get e to the x times f of the square root of x plus e to the x times the derivative with respect to x of f of the square root of x. All right, so that works out to e to the x times f of the square root of x plus e to the x times f prime of the square root of x times the derivative with respect to x of the square root of x by the chain rule. But we know what the derivative of the square root is, right? So this is e to the x f of the square root of x plus e to the x times f prime of the square root of x times 1 over twice the square root because that's the derivative of, of square root. So that, that would be that. So th there's a few of these problems in your homework where you've got a function which is not given and you're asked to differentiate. In this kind of situation, you just have to approach it symbolically and your answer will involve the unknown function. Okay? Yeah? Um, example five, like what, what if instead of, what if, a, what if you had an A and a B and a C which were not known to be constant, how would that go? How would that look different? So like, for example, what if you were differentiating Let's see here, example five. What if we were differentiating, um, you know, suppose y is equal to mx plus b, and you're going to calculate dy dx, but this time we don't know that m and b are constants. How does that look? So here, m and b not necessarily constant. All right. How does that go? See, if m and b are constants, then you guys should be able to tell me the derivative of this thing, right, like with minimal effort. What would it be? What's that? The, I think you said m, right? Yeah, yeah just m, because m is the slope of the line, y equals mx plus b. But if m is not a constant, it's not really a line, is it? It's, it's whatever. It's, it's a thing, yeah, it's something. And so how would you differentiate this? Well, what do you do? You gotta, all you can hope to do is to write the answer in terms of derivatives of the unknown functions m and b. So that differentiation, it's, I mean, I, I guess it's just a little bit unsettling because you know, you're going to have things you don't know in the answer, but here it is. I mean, it's dm dx times x plus m times dx dx. That's the product rule. And then plus db dx, which is, you know, x um, times dm dx plus m plus db dx, and that, that would be it. Does that make sense? Yes, no, maybe so. Let's do something super easy for a second. Do you guys know what the vertex form is for a parabola? We have a times x minus h squared plus plus k. This gives, gives parabola with vertex h comma k. For example, if I had y equals to, you know, say 2x squared um, plus 20 plus 20x minus 7, uh, let, me, let me make my life easier. Let me make it minus 8 just to make things easier. 
Now I could factor the two out. I could complete the square, x plus 5 squared, minus uh, 25, minus 4. And let's see here, so that's 2 times x plus 5 squared, minus 25, minus 4 is minus 29. Minus 29 times 2 is minus 58, I think. So multiplying it back out here for a second. So I can see that the vertex where for this parabola is where minus 5 comma minus 58. Where is its x-intercepts? Where are the x-intercepts for this parabola? See if I go back up to here and continue. I've got 2 times x plus 5 minus the square root of 29. x plus 5 plus the square root of 29. So I can see that the x-intercepts are at x equals to minus 5 plus or minus the square root of 29. Right. So there you go. Graphically speaking, this thing's got the the, the, you know, vertex down here somewhere, and, you know, it's, wee something like that. Right. Now, none of this is calculus, right? This is all college algebra. This is the vertex of a parabola. Um, that's how to find its x-intercepts by factoring, right? Factoring can be ugly. Completing the square will help you see around the ugly part. Um, now to add some calculus, what's the slope? What's the slope to the tangent line at any point here? You know, like if I, say, pick this point and found the tangent line, say that point is 1. For my example here, what's that? one? 2 plus 20 is 22. 22 minus 8 is 14. So what's the equation of the tangent line through, four, through that point? All right, so dy dx is what for my example? dy dx is, we got what, 4x plus 20. So if we take dy dx and we evaluate it, so this notation, guys, this is an evaluation bar, so we take dy dx, we put x equals to 1 into it, which is what, 4 plus, 4 plus 20, also known as 24. So the equation of the tangent line is, apparently, 14 plus 24 times x minus 1. There's the equation of that tangent line to this parabola. What's the equation to an arbitrary tangent line through this parabola? What's the equation of, you know, tangent line through, let's say, x equals to x naught, where x naught is a variable? Well, it would be y is equal to f of x naught plus f prime of x naught times x minus x naught. So like specifically for my example, we're talking about what? We're talking about, you know, um, 2 x naught squared plus 20 x naught minus 8 plus parentheses uh, 4 x naught plus 20 times x minus x naught. So there, there you go, guys. That, that is the equation of the tangent line to that parabola through an arbitrary point, x naught, x equals x naught on the curve. You could do interesting things with this formula, like you could say, for example, is there a tangent line which intersects, you know, like this point over here, for example, like what would that point be? Maybe uh, 
2, you know, uh, minus 10 or something, right? Is there, is there a tangent line to that parabola which goes through that point? How would you figure out that? Well, so you're looking for the specific tangent line that like, it's some, if I graphed it better, you could see it. There's, in fact, if you study it, <laughs> there's pretty much going to be a tangent line that intersects any point outside of the parabola. <coughs> if you did it, if you, if you <laughs> I think I made this picture before, right? Like, <laughs> so to figure out what that green line is, you'd just put this is minus 10, right? Equals to 2x naught squared plus 2x naught minus 8 plus parentheses 4x naught plus 20 times. Well, that point has x equals to 2, so 2 minus x naught. And you just have to solve the green equation, which you could do because it's quadratic. Yeah? Um, x naught is specifically the point of tangency. So in this setup, it would be like my, I, I'm making it look like it's through the, let me try this again here. There, so it looks a little bit more interesting. So it's here somewhere, right? X naught, f of x naught for, for brevity's sake, but it's the point of tangency which we don't know. Now this is a, this is a more challenging question, right, than just find the tangent line at a point, but it's a question we could also ask and answer because ultimately it's just a quadratic equation. We can solve those, right? I'm not going to do that, but you could. All right, what else did I have planned for today? Oh, yes, I, need, I promised you I would work out the derivative of inverse hyperbolic tangent today, so let us do that. <clears throat> So how should we start? We're trying to work out the derivative of inverse hyperbolic tangent. How's that go? How should we start? Just, oh, by the way, reminder, we graphed hyperbolic tangent before. We learned that it has horizontal asymptotes of plus and minus one. And the hyperbolic tangent basically looks something like this. This is y equals tanch of x. So what we have to look forward here to is that the, um, the range of hyperbolic tangent of x is actually minus one to one included the domain is what? Yeah, it's everything. So if that's, if my graph is like legit, we kind of expect that the, the derivative should be positive. But I think actually there's not going to be any algebra like in the sine and cosine problem to think about. Okay, so what's our first step? What do we do? We had a, I had a four step process I shared with you guys, right? Step number one, right? Y equals to the thing we're trying to differentiate. Right? So we've got y equals to inverse tangent of x. Step number one. Step number two, we take the hyperbolic tangent of both sides. Step number three, we differentiate both sides. We worked out the derivative of hyperbolic tangent is hyperbolic secant squared. Oops, I almost missed something. What is it? We're differentiating with respect to x, right? So if we do that, we have to put a dy dx here. Of course, dx dx is 1. Lo and behold, we got ourselves dy dx is 1 over hyperbolic secant squared of y. Now, what's the deal with hyperbolic secant squared? Well, remember, the critical identity, the crucial central identity is that cosh squared y minus cinch squared y is equal to 1. So if you know that, you should know it. You can derive it from the definitions if you don't, from the laws of algebra. But if I divide this equation by cosh squared, what do I get?
that gives me 1 minus hyperbolic tangent squared y is equal to hyperbolic secant squared y. But what was hyperbolic tangent squared? I mean, what is hyperbolic tangent here? It is, by assumption, x, right? So this is literally x squared. And so this is nothing more than 1 over 1 minus x squared. Yay. So there it is. The derivative with respect to x of inverse hyperbolic tangent of x is simply 1 over 1 minus x squared. And what's the domain? What's the domain of the inverse hyperbolic tangent? Remember, it's the range of the hyperbolic tangent, which is minus 1 to 1. So as long as we're there, right, as long as we're between plus or minus 1, we're taking 1 minus a number with smaller magnitude than 1 and squaring it, right? So this is necessarily a positive number corresponding to my claim that we should get a positive change for the inverse function, which we do. Now, this formula still makes sense like the right-hand side still makes sense when the left-hand side does not, right? Because the domain of inverse hyperbolic tangent is only minus 1 to 1. If you take inverse hyperbolic tangent at 2, that doesn't make sense. And yet, you could plug a 2 in here, you know? So that's kind of funny. Uh, example 8. Let's see here. Suppose we have... The position x is equal to 10 minus like 6t plus um, 4.9t squared, minus 4.9t squared. So that could be the position at time t. What would the velocity at time t be? Velocity v is dx dt. So that would give us minus 6, um, minus 9.8t. That's the velocity at time t. All right. What's the acceleration? Acceleration is equal to dv dt. So that here would just be ni minus 9.8. So, you know, that's like a, uh, if, if x is equal to like the vertical distance, this might be a formula for uh, what's called projectile motion, which is motion where the acceleration is just equal to 9.8 meters per second squared downward. Usually I put a y there instead of an x, but whatever. Any questions about this? So I think there's like a token question or two about physics in your homework, but really all you need to do there is remember position is um, the derivative of position's velocity, the derivative of velocity is acceleration, and you should be able to answer the question on the basis of that. Um, so. The only other thing I can think about that I don't think we've done too much of is something like d dx of x to the say sine of x. That might be in your homework, I can't remember. But something like this, the approach you want to take for something like that is to write y equals to x sine x, x to the sine x, and then like take the natural log of it. But I feel like that may be next week, guys, so I'm, I'm probably getting myself ahead of the story. But you could use that trick and then differentiate that to take a derivative of such a thing like that. I feel like that's next week, though, so I don't think that's in your homework. Let me say this. I won't put that kind of problem on the quiz Monday. The quiz Monday should be like basic differentiation, product rule, quotient rule, chain rule. Lots of that. Probably a token higher derivative. We did talk about higher derivatives, so. But anyway, I'll shut up. Have a good weekend.